All right, we just finished assignment one. So we can clear that in our folder. I mark it green and I make a new folder because now I'm introducing assignment two. We'll find it in unit eight because assignment two is also a compositing project like our landscape, but whereas our landscape took at least five different reference files and combine them into a quote unquote believable fantasy landscape. We're going to now do it with a living creature, a figurative element instead of a background element. So if we go to unit modules, go to unit five, this is creature concept compositing. We need to sketch and then we'll show the finished composite. The creature has to be shown from head to toe, just floating on a blank, blank background. As part of this, there is a question of the day for this unit. So I'd like you to visit this question of the day by February 12th and write your thoughts on it. This is an incredibly important question of the day. Of only four we have for the semester, because this is the one that deals with copyright and what rights do you have to your own pixels? What rights do you have to other people's pixels? What obligations come with it? What are the different ways you can license your images? And this has everything to do with making a living off of digital art. This is also related to the only required reading you have for the semester, which is chapter two, linked in your course outline. So do please read chapter two to help answer this question. And then you get full credit for it by answering with more than 100 words. There are some slides we'll be talking about when we do a discussion. We'll be discussing question of the day one next class, which was part of our assignment one unit. But I want you to start being now curious about, well, what happens when you take other people's pixels and don't credit them or don't, don't meet the requirements of the copyright? What happens when people steal pixels from me? That kind of thing. All right, then this is the project. We are making our own fantasy creatures. Later on, we will have the option, actually in assignment three, to animate those creatures, right? So here you see a little animated example. But for now, we just need to build them. And just like we did with our landscapes, build, drawing a sketch, thinking of kind of three layers, and then finding things to populate that sketch with, we're going to do the same thing with our fantasy creatures. A good place to start is to look at your assignment one. So mine is this cave, this grotto, right? And think what kind of creature might live there. Does it fly? Does it skitter? Uh, does it swim? You know, these kind of things. You might have favorite animals that you want to base it on. Or you might have favorite mythological animals or creatures that you want to try to make your own version of, right? So for instance, if I really like a chameleon, maybe I combine a chameleon with another kind of creature that would fit into that environment. So a chameleon and a toad, you know, and then blend it together. Now the problem is with creature design, the thing that matters most is something called silhouette. So for the creature to be clearly identifiable in any lighting condition, it needs to have a good strong silhouette. You'll always hear this with animators and character designs and cast sheets and our our digital honor student is working with that on, on her cast sheet, trying to get really distinct silhouettes. The idea of that is if they're just a blank, like black shadow, you can still kind of tell the, the anatomy and the features of the creature. So one point of inspiration that's really good at this is Pokemon. There are over a, a thousand, I think, Pokemon designs now. Some of them are not as strong as others. But if I look for like a lizard, Pokemon, because I think something lizardish would be interesting, and I, I just do a quick image search. What you'll see are silhouettes, that's a little too busy, but silhouettes that really show the anatomy. So this is a good one, kind of a salamander one. This is interesting, it already has kind of wings and fantasy features. 
this is too busy for me, this is too silly for me. So you're going to use your own taste, but Pokemon is, is usually a good place to start. This one's pretty interesting. This one's cute. So what I do is I'll look at a few different Pokemon. Ooh, this one's nice. And then I'm going to save them into my assignment two folder as inspiration. So let's make an assignment. Oh, I got one already. All right. And let me just move these in. Doesn't matter if they're high quality or not. You're not going to find them on Pixabay because they're all copyrighted. This is just to inspire your own creation. Just find them on the internet. Or you can find them from books you have and take pictures of them or just look at them. Now, just like when we were sketching for our landscape, I'm going to use the view options here to make these a little bit bigger, a little bit clearer, so I can reference them as a style sheet and I'm going to do my sketch. Now I recommend, strongly recommend you use paper and pencil for this, unless you're really comfortable with digital sketching, digital drawing. But I'm going to use my tablet here and show you. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to use pretty much the defaults for Instagrams. And then I'm just going to use my brush, make it pressure sensitive and small, but not one pixel small, just so I can sketch. All right, there we go. And now I want a silhouette that's really clean. And it looks like I'm going to make them all facing to the left, or my left. So uh, let me flip this one. And all creatures, vertebrate or invertebrate, will have something that's a focal point for your viewer. That focal point is usually the cranium of the creature, the thing that holds their brain or their eyes, or both, right? That's usually a circular shape. So you can see the cranium here, the cranium here, the cranium here, the cranium here. I'm going to start by sketching a cranium, right? Then... All creatures have something that's attached to the cranium. You can even think of a jellyfish this way, even though it's not a traditional cranium. They have a beak. They have a jaw, a mandible, a maw, a snout, something. So these are kind of lizard-based creatures. This looks more beakish. This looks more like muzzle-ish. This one, it's all just kind of flattened into it. I'm going to do something a little more snake-like. So I'm going to do kind of a jaw like this. And you know what? I like that little snake tongue, so I'm going to be inspired by it. And I'm going to make it open and having a tongue come out. Right? You do not need to be good at drawing for this. This can look really rough. What we're trying to figure out is proportions. So I'm already thinking snake head would be cool. I haven't done a snake head in this class. Okay, now... The eyes go on that cranium somewhere. And they don't need to match any of these Pokemon eyes. I could do like something really big and silly, right, and cute, which might be fun. I could do something squinty. I could do something really bizarre. But let's go with a cute eye. So I'll say big cute eye. Maybe that big eye can come from a good old chameleon reference. I don't know if I'm spelling it right. But I get to play with these proportions, right? So already a snake head with a chameleon eye is a fantasy creature. Next, that head, that cranium is connected to the body in some way. The thorax of an insect. The, uh, the lead tentacle of the octopus, right? So you have to draw kind of a, a wavy line that shows the gesture. This one, you can see that gesture kind of springs back like this. This one you see that gesture kind of curls behind, kind of slopes down and then curls. I kind of like that, so I'm going to go with that. Next you have to decide how big is the rib cage of this creature. Rib cages of li lizards are usually quite small, so they have a lot of mobility with their arms. 
So maybe I make a small rib cage, a little oval shape. We're using basic shapes, squares, circles, ovals, triangles, and I like wedge shapes, which are triangles with their head cut off, right? Now, where you put that rib cage determines how long the neck is. I don't want the neck to be particularly long. So maybe I don't make the rib cage up there. Maybe I make it up here, make that neck really short, a little cuter, right? So the neck's nice and thin. That kind of takes away from the snake aspects of it. But next along the spine, what do you have? You have a pelvis. And I think I like the goofiness of this one, the goofiness of this one, where the pelvis is quite large. So I'm going to make a big pelvis with a little rib cage. And then you're going to have arms, right? The arms are going to come from the rib cage into hands, cute little hands. And I'm going to have the creature facing us, so not turning its back to us. So there is its collarbone. This is its rib cage. That's what it looks like, skeletal wise. Then the spine connects and we have this huge pelvis. The pelvis has a joint here and a joint here. And then the legs are going to go like this, down, back, forward to the toe, down, back, forward to the toe. Now this gets easier the more you do creature design and drawing, and some of you will be more comfortable with it than others, but as long as you're thinking in terms of the silhouette, you're in good shape. So right now my silhouette's kind of like this. Really dumpy at the bottom. Right, that's kind of my silhouette. That's kind of an interesting shape for a creature. So then I think, how can I play with this silhouette a little bit? Well, I like this feature. Pokemon is good at silhouettes. So maybe a little something like that just gives it a little bit more of a focal point. Looks a little dinosaurish, but I'm going to make it funkier with that, that big eye. And now I want to think, okay, I want some sort of tail. I don't think I want um, wings. I like the idea of spikes on the tail. So maybe I do kind of a lizard tail, but it has a pine cone at the end, right? That changes its silhouette a little bit too. So pine cone, lizard, uh, maybe what kind of creature? Maybe a frog big back legs. Uh, for this, it has arms. Let's see, maybe I'm not sure. Maybe for this, fish fins. And then for the torso, which is largely the most important part, because that's where it's going to have all the connections. I have to figure out what to do for the torso. Or maybe I use a bird. I'm doing a bird kind of thing in the other class. So maybe the arms actually go out like this and I just have like little bat wings. Ooh, bats live in caves. So I'm going to do a bat torso and wings. But they're going to be tiny and silly. That's kind of what I'm doing in the other class. So instead of the arms, because I actually don't like to do creature design that have arms and wings, because that doesn't exist in nature. It's very hard to make work anatomically. I also don't do creature designs with multiple heads without a lot of study of anatomy, because that's pretty difficult to do correctly. Just letting you know. You can try it. I can help you improve these sketches next class, just like we did with our landscapes. So now my silhouette has changed a little bit, and I like it. So it's going to be kind of this hopping, flightless cave bird thing. 
So what's my